in our NDC baby sleep work or in the possum sleep program we don't use graphs to illustrate um, baby sleep cycles or to compare them to adult sleep cycles. We'd argue that those kinds of graphs are actually quite misleading because baby sleep architecture is flexible and adaptive. The sleep-wake homeostat is biologically flexible and adaptive. And so really it doesn't help parents to be thinking so much in terms of uh, active sleep and, and quiet sleep. It's not to say we don't notice as parents that, let, let's say we've breastfed our little one off to sleep and we certainly wouldn't be wanting to rouse that one by, by burping or feeling we have to hold upright. We want to use that dialing down of the sympathetic nervous system and the dialing up of the parasympathetic nervous system that happens with a lovely close breast feed. We want to use that to allow the sleep regulators to kick in. And it might be that you notice at first the little ones in active sleep, so there's the flickering under the eyelids and a little bit of jerking. But after 15 or so minutes, the baby may fall into deep sleep. And that's when the, the muscles, the little baby's body is really floppy. You might put the baby down then in a cart or some safe place on their back. Now it's very common for babies to wake um, when we try putting them down during the day and that simply means that the sleep pressure is not that high the little one didn't need more sleep because if the baby needed sleep he or she would take it um, but now I've remembered I'm actually talking to you here about baby sleep architecture and how it's really not helpful so certainly um, we use our experience we learn how to um, detect really whether our baby's in light sleep or deep sleep as, as parents we're, we're forever um, noticing and um, making decisions about what our next steps might be according to what we notice in our baby um, but really um, giving you graphs around sleep architecture doesn't help um, healthy baby and healthy family sleep mm -hmm.